Welcome back to The Ed Show. Breaking news tonight of the Trayvon Martin case. ABC News has obtained video of George Zimmerman being taken into the police department after he was detained by Sanford police. Joining me by phone is Walter Zalisco, president and CEO of Global Investigative Group and a retired police chief. Mr. Zalesko, thank you for your time tonight. You're on the phone with us and you're looking at the videotape. From what you can see, how does this videotape square with the initial police report that was filed and released on Monday? All right, well, first of all, uh, good evening. Hi, uh, yeah, I, I'm looking at this videotape and it, it clearly uh, isn't consistent with what the police report uh, reflects. Uh, I mean, the police report does state that uh, they observe uh, uh, wetness on the back of his jacket and grass stains. Well, we, we can't really uh, see if there's any wetness on the back of that jacket. There clearly could be. But what we can observe is that there are no signs of any uh, inju serious injuries. Uh, you do see a police officer looking at the back of his head at some point in this video. So to indicate there may be a small abrasion. Uh, all right, there's no blood coming from his face or his nose area. I don't observe any blood splatter on his shirt or jacket. That's not to say that there is maybe a drop or two, but we, you don't have the quantity of uh, uh, blood to reflect a serious injury. Now, you got to remember that he's claiming self-defense. So there are three important facts that really have to be proven in any self-defense claim is that, one, that the danger or threat was imminent, and then two, that they reasonably believed that he would be harmed and that he reasonably responded to that danger. You know, if the guy scratches his head when he falls on the ground, does that believe that he's going to die? Does he really believe that? I, I, wanna, I, if, I wanna look at this videotape again. That officer on the left of Zimmerman right there opened up his jacket uh, to see uh, if there was anything in there, or it, it's almost as if he hadn't done it before. Uh, if we can roll the videotape back, I, I think that that is more than interesting, that uh, here he is, so we're isolating, you can see his head, it doesn't appear to be any kind of damage to his head, and clearly uh, his head isn't bleeding, but of course this is after, and, but here's the videotape that, that I, I find interesting. Uh, the police officer uh, goes to him face to face right here, and now he's going to uh, put his right hand on his chest and open up his shirt, open up his jacket. What do you, what do you as if he's searching him for the first time? What do you make of that, Mr. Zalisco? Well, uh, obviously, I, I hope that the police uh, conducted a, a search uh, at the scene. Uh, to see if he possibly uh, may have any more weapons on him. But the problem I have with this uh, search here is that the, the officer is handling that jacket, and if they're placing that jacket into evidence for, to, for any possible DNA evidence that they could find, he's contaminating that uh, whole jacket, uh, you know, by uh, moving his hands uh, inside and out and about that jacket. Well, I want to see the videotape again. Because it looks to me like the police officer is putting his hands in the pockets of George Zimmerman to see if he's got anything in his pockets. And then, well, after, that, then is that, I mean, it, wouldn't he have done that on the scene? Well, you, you would think so, you know, but maybe this is another officer transporting. You know, he, I don't know if this is the same officer who initially responded. You know, when, when, uh, when the officers arrive at the scene, the, uh, they can hand off the prisoner to another officer uh, to do the transport to headquarters. Okay. So this officer could be just, you know, uh, covering himself to make sure he doesn't have any uh, objects that could be used as a weapon. All right, he's checking his pockets right there. He's going on the inside. Now he goes around on the back and he touches the backside of Zimmerman and then he seems to wipe his hands. Mm -hmm. on his own pants right there. Do you see that? Yeah. Well, that would indicate that there's, it's probably wet. That the back of the jacket has some moisture on it. How troubling and, is this videotape, Mr. Zaleski? Well, it, 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 it's troubling in the fact that it, uh, Mr. Zimmerman doesn't uh, reflect the injuries, you know, that would be consistent with somebody who's just uh, uh, fearing uh, for his life and, and had to you know, kill somebody to defend himself. I mean, you know, this looks like, I mean, I, I don't know how to describe it. it. It doesn't, it just doesn't look consistent. Now, I said no. earlier on this broadcast that I've never seen anybody taken into 
uh, a police house, a police station after shooting somebody. Is this normal? I mean, is, is this, I mean, does this look like uh, they know the guy or is this standard operating procedure here? Well, I, I think, you know, most of the police officers probably do know Mr. Zimmerman uh, for the simple fact that, you know, he was the uh, uh, so-called patrol captain of Neighborhood Watch, and, you know, he's had, what, over 140 phone calls to the police. So you do form some type of a relationship. And, and being that he was a cop buff, there's no doubt that, you know, he would be associating with some of these guys. Yeah. But and the way they're bringing him in, that, that's normal procedure. There's nothing unusual about that. Is it normal procedure for the police officers not to have gloves? Gloves on, and to be going. You said he that he may have contaminated that jacket. Well, that's what I'm saying. They they should have had the plastic gloves on if they're going to do any search. You know, even if they're searching for a weapon, you know, you you know, any smart officer would realize that they're going to be taking this jacket in as evidence, and uh, they just contaminated it by placing their hands all over it, possibly smearing something. So you say that this videotape is not consistent with the police report and the injuries that were reported.